So this last set of the videos is we're going to be talking about how to write the formulas for an ionic compound. Okay, writing formulas of ionic compounds. And it's pretty simple for this one. Writing formulas of an ionic compound. The idea is to make sure that our charges completely cancel out. So for something like how about sodium and sulfur, they would combine to make sodium sulfide. Well, we've got a sodium, it wants to be a plus one, and sulfur here wants to be a minus two. We need to have exactly as much positive charge as we do negative charge, which is a little bit of an issue because they don't match up right away. But I'm sure if we puzzle at it for a little bit, we'd be able to figure out, hey, if I have two sodiums and only one sulfur, that would match up. Na2s would be how I write that formula. Now I have two plus ones, one minus two, so we got total of positive two, total of negative two. It matches up. Well, for things that are get a little bit more complicated, like say magnesium nitride, well, we know that magnesium here wants to be a 2 plus and nitrogen here wants to be a minus 3. Well that would take some doing before we figured out that uh, well hey 2 and 3 they both have a common multiple at 6. So if I have two nitrogens and let's see to get 6 I need to multiply it by 3. So if I have three nitro uh, magnesiums and two nitrogens that'll end up with a negative 6 on a positive 6. That'll work out. I don't want you to have to do all that work and all that thinking. So we're going to show you a handy dandy method that we call the crisscross method. The crisscross. Alright, so here we go. The crisscross method. We're going to take the ni names of the elements. Let's say we are given, how about aluminum bromide. All we're going to do is take the aluminum, we know that it's going to be a plus three, and then bromine, we find it, it wants to be a minus one. Well, all we're going to do, crisscross method is as simple as it sounds. We're going to take this number and bring it down and make it the new subscript. So AL1. Bring the three down, make it the new subscript for bromine. Now you notice I dropped the positive and negative charges. These are just numbers, there's no signs. And we're gonna make one more change after this. If it's just one, or if we can simplify this thing at all, like a fraction, we're gonna do so. So Al3 plus and Br minus one will crisscross to form aluminum bromide AlBr3. It does all of the math for us. We don't need to worry about doing the, uh, all that math in our head. So let's go ahead and see a couple others. How about calcium oxide? We've got a Ca2+, plus. we know calcium is going to be a 2+, plus. we know oxygen here wants to be a minus 2. Well, let's pull the 2 down and pull that 2 down. We get Ca2O2. Hmm. Do you think that could be a little bit simpler? Especially if we look back at the charges and we say, hey, minus 2, plus 2. All they need to do is just match up. Well, that's exactly what happens. 2 and 2 can simplify to 1 and 1. So we end up with just CaO as calcium oxide. Let's take a look at our next one. Scoot this up a little bit. There we go. Take a look at a couple more examples. How about, how about potassium nitride. We know that K wants to be a plus one. We know that nitrogen wants to be a minus three. So we're going to pull those numbers down and across and they become the new subscripts. K3N1, which we change and simplify to just be K3N. Well, let's see how it works with a transition metal. Let's recall that to write a formula or write a name for a transition metal uh, atom or a compound, excuse me, you need a Roman numeral. 
So let's look up how we would do iron 2 chloride. Iron 2 chloride. Well, it's telling us that iron has a plus 2 charge. That's what the Roman numeral means. It means the charge on the metal. We know that chlorine is going to be a minus 1. So let's crisscross. We see Fe1Cl2, and that cleans up to just look like FeCl2. See another couple here. How about titanium 4 oxide? Titanium 4 oxide. Well, Ti, it's telling us, is going to have a plus 4. Oxygen wants to be a minus 2. By the way, guys, it would probably make your life a lot easier if you went ahead and memorized that chart. Oxygen wants to be a minus 2. So we're going to bring the 2 down and across, bring the 4 down and across. We get Ti2O4. Let me get that mouse out of the way. That can simplify. 2 and 4, they're both divisible by 2. So that can simplify down to TiO2. Scoot that up so you can see it. TiO2. So you see that ends up simplifying. If you wrote Ti2O4 on a quiz, wouldn't cut it. Got to make sure it's the fully simplified answer. That is crisscrossing in a nutshell. Uh, we're going to see it a little bit more in depth when we get into class, but hope that helps. Uh